Hello, everyone. My name is Wael Harbi. I'm uh, the Assistant Professor of Computer Assisted Language Learning at Yambo English Language and Preparatory Year Institute in Saudi Arabia. I'm here today uh, to talk to you about my recent research in uh, about artificial intelligence in the foreign language classroom, a pedagogical overview of the automated writing assistance tools. As part of Global Awards on Artificial Intelligence and Robotics uh, nominations uh, in uh, uh, artificial intelligence conferences and robotics. Uh, in the beginning, I will talk to you about the rationale of the study. Uh, I will overview the research questions, the methodology implemented, results, discussions, and conclusion. Um, and then I will move on to uh, the uh, to over overview the uh, recommendations by the researchers. Um, the rationale of the study actually came from the need for a collective study that collects and looks at most of the studies that have been conducted recently in the field of artificial intelligence um, over the past uh, five years um, and uh, see if we can uh, find a trend in terms of the different tools used and implemented and introduced into the classroom. Recent technological advances in artificial intelligence, uh, AI, have paved the way for improved and, in many cases, the creation of entirely new and innovative electronic writing tools. These writing support systems assist during and after the writing process, making them is indispensable to many writers in general and to students in particular who can get human-like sentence completion suggestions and text generation. The purpose of this review is twofold. Actually, as we said, we wanted to explore the recent scholarly publication that evaluated the use of AI-powered writing assistance tools in classroom in terms of the types, uses, limits, and potential for improving students' writing skills and for uh, reviewing this, uh, uh, the perceptions of educators uh, in, the, in the studies reviewed to see what do they think about these tools and what do they recommend in terms of uh, the use of these tools. For this reason, we developed three research questions. The first research question has to do with what state-of-the-art AI-powered writing assistance technologies are in use by students and teachers in tertiary education, and what are they used for? The second question is what are the strengths and limitations of these technologies, and how do they impact students' writing? And the third question has to do with um, knowing what do the researchers and educators believe uh, about these tools, and how can we, or how should we, um, deal with them in the classroom. Uh, using Scopus research database of a total of 379 peer-reviewed papers, uh, we uh, analyzed the papers and filtered them uh, using Prisma flowchart to figure out the ones or choose the ones that we believe uh, that serve the purpose of the research. Uh, we excluded, of course, we used this Prisma uh, methodology starting with identification of the uh, uh, using keywords uh, in the search engines and identified these uh, papers. And then we started um, excluding and uh, removing the studies that we believe they don't belong to the study. So we ended with uh, 104 papers. After the review process, um, two main themes were identified for um, this uh, review. The first theme was current and emerging AI-powered writing assistance technology. So that answers question one and two. We wanted to know what are the AI-powered writing assistance that are in use. The second theme is theme uh, that has to do with recommendations, evaluations, criticism, uh, praise of these tools uh, from the eyes of the researchers. And each theme, of course, there are sub-themes uh, like, for example, the emerging tools, we found that most of the tools that they talked about were either automated writing evaluation tools, tools that provide automated writing evaluation, tools that provided automated writing corrective feedback, tools that provided um, machine translation powered by artificial intelligence, and machines that, uh, or, or tools that produced texts using GPT-3 technology. And for the recommendations, we found that the recommendations revolved around two sub-themes, either the classroom integration, so they called for integrating these tools into classroom with some recommendations, or having a, a broader view of, of, of these tools by adopting an ecology, uh, ecological perspective towards these tools. As you can see here, the studies that we uh, analyzed uh, are summarized here. 
So the themes are current emerging power, uh, AI powered writing technologies and recommendations by scholars. And then the sub themes uh, are here. And these are the studies that uh, were concerning each one of these sub themes. Uh, the results of the analysis, uh, we will go through the results in terms of the sub themes. So the first one has to do with the, the tools that the students use and they were they were found to be used in the classroom. The first one was the automated writing evaluation, AWE, and these tools are electronic feedback that uh, can be given to students through automated writing evaluation systems, which are broadly used in both and first, second language teaching contexts and all uh, at all education levels, starting from elementary schools to university. These automated writing evaluation tools, such as Criterion, My Access, or Write to Learn softwares, are examples of AI-powered synchronous text editors. So they they, they give students uh, feedback instantly, uh, syn synchronously when they write. Teachers often find these tools extremely time. They find uh, uh, giving feedback to students is uh, they find it extremely time consuming and tedious uh, kind of work. So they. Uh, sometimes have large size, large class size, many students in one class and to provide each student with their individualized feedback that takes uh, a lot of time and adds a lot to their already uh, overloaded uh, schedule. So to, to point, pinpoint the inaccuracy and the inaccuracies and the pitfalls and, and mistakes in the writing is, is actually challenging. So the, these tools can, can step in and do this task of uh, finding these, let's say, superficial kind of mistakes, like the ones that uh, some uh, word processors would usually uh, find and highlight and correct sometimes with, with no intervention from um, a human writer. Uh, several studies, we found several studies that uh, these uh, tools can, can help, especially in the early stages of, of writing, because we know that writing is, is a process and uh, sometimes students are involved in producing many versions of uh, of the writing. So it was found that using these tools in the beginning would help uh, a lot. Despite the recent significant advances in AI-powered uh, systems, uh, where quick synchronous and varied automated support is provided to writers, uh, there are areas these tools that cannot help actually. And the reason why, because we said it, it uh, takes care of the superficial kind of, of problems. But in terms of organization, coherence, and argumentation uh, are all areas that show that these tools can fall short and cannot be of great help. And of course, this can be attributed to the complexity of human language. Uh, human language is complex. It's not only words that are combined together. So it is complex and such tools um, might not be the best help for students. The second type of tools that we found uh, in literature are the automated writing corrective feedback. And uh, this is an under, underexplored area in computer assisted language learning, which is the use of editing tools that are similar to uh, automated writing uh, feedback. But uh, this one provide instant real time uh, automated uh, writing corrective feedback. Now, while AWE tools provide feedback and suggestions for already written text, the AWCF tools go beyond that, and uh, they suggest you sometimes, not only just find you and highlight the mistakes, they suggest you words, they suggest you structures, they suggest you sometimes phrases. And an example of this, Grammarly. Grammarly software can continuously and simultaneously provide corrections and suggestions while writers are uh, on the move when they compose their texts. Uh, using Grammarly in EFL education settings has been examined in several studies in the literature. Many of these studies have found that these or the feedback generated by Grammarly was mostly accurate. However, other studies found that Grammarly was unable to flag errors accurately by either over flagging, which is called uh, false positives, or by missing flagging or missed flagging, where it is known as false negatives. And um, in literature, they talk about actually uh, how sometimes it is too complicated for students to understand the feedback and other studies reported the opposite where they thought the feedback is so simplistic and so easy and that uh, missed uh, the opportunity for many students to learn from their own mistake. Uh, the third type of uh, AI powered automated assistant tools is the translation tools and I'm here referring to mostly uh, Google Translate. 
bringing machine translation to the foreign language classrooms has been very controversial. It is believed that when comparing machine translation systems to the other available digital tools, the Google Translate stands out as particularly uh, polemical. Uh, generally speaking, language teachers tend to forbid the use of Google Translate and translators in their classes because some, some of them think that it discouraged the use, uh, discouraged the students from uh, learning the language, and they they think it is cheating. And some think that that might lead to an end to the demand of foreign language instructors, and that is controversial. Actually, some teachers actually think that students they are composing using their first language, and then they just click in a click of a button, they produce texts in the second language that are not own, their own and cannot be detected by cheating detectors, plagiarism detectors. Uh, several studies in the literature have explored the use of machine translation in second language acquisition. With special attention was to using it with, uh, in writing tasks, and these studies entail allowing students to use machine translation for completing their first drafts or comparing their first drafts with their machine translated versions. Many of the studies that we reviewed have demonstrated significant improvements in the writing quality of the students' writing when machine translation was integrated into the learning task. Nevertheless, it is the case with, uh, as the case with AWE research, research on the use of machine translation in the L2 writing classroom seems to mainly focus on examining the quality of the writing samples produced using MT machine translation in those studies, rather than trying to answer the $1 million question as to whether or not there was evidence of any gains in lexical, grammatical knowledge or any long-term transfer to general writing ability. So these studies, although valuable, um, they, they failed to show you if the impact was long-term. Um, among the possible drawbacks of machine translation or Google Translate in the foreign classroom, uh, that it could lead to both uh, both learners and teachers to form a wrong uh, reductionist perception of language. Or in other words, it can prom promote the idea that human languages are merely discrete and unique codes that can be easily re-encoded from one language to another based upon one for one transfer from one language to another, which is, of course, we know it's not the case. There's so many aspects to be uh, checked uh, when we compose from uh, a language to another, uh, the pragmatic and um, social and, and, and other uh, other other aspects. The fourth type of automated text uh, automated uh, or uh, AI powered uh, writing assistant tools is called automatic text generations or generators uh, or deep learning technology use uh, in text production. Nowadays, it is referred to as GPT three. Um, the, the discussion is actually long about uh, these tools, uh, and it is controversial. And uh, everyone now talks about GPT-3 uh, chatbots and uh, how these generators, text generators, can help students generate uh, texts that are uh, as good as human uh, uh, producers of language and yet cannot be detected by plagiarism detectors. Uh, these technologies use uh, what is called uh, neural uh, linguistic units, matching the, the way that human human brains work. And the, the appearance of advanced generations of language models, the AI systems have been increasingly becoming more able to create text on their own using predictive text technology. Um, and it is associated with predicting what word should come next, considering what word precedes it. Uh, large models of language can be defined as AI systems that are based on large data sets, which can be analyzed through machine learning and can lead to the capacity to interact with human language effectively. Despite its huge steps forward in neuro linguistic programming, GPT-3 follows trends that are already underway in AI-powered writing assistance. With advances in language modeling, writing tools have moved forward uh, towards automated, automated text generation. The emergence of such intelligent text generators may mark the biggest change in the writing since the invention of the word processor, of course. Uh, not long ago, uh, autocompletion capabilities were limited to word, uh, words and phrases, which meant that the suggestions were more likely to be correct. But now uh, we can see that GPT-3 uh, can uh, produce uh, longer text. And it is anticipated, and actually it is now, uh, and it's going to be. Uh, definitely continuing to change to change the game and produce even uh, more uh, advanced kind of texts. Um, the, these are the, the, the four types of uh, AI-powered assistance tools that we can we could find 
uh, we could find in these uh, studies. And as far as the second team, the theme of the uh, the findings of the uh, review was the recommendations by the scholars. We found that the new realm of writing support presented by the advent of text generators and the widespread of use of machine translation and AWE, AWCF tools highlights opportunities and challenges for L2 teachers in general and writing teachers in particular. It is both unrealistic, actually, and unacceptable to reject or ignore the use of advanced writing assistance tools after they have become so naturalized and widely available in globalized and modern worlds. Uh, we should we should keep an uh, open eye uh, actually on, on on the matter, and we should know that um, some some scholars think that artificial intelligence powered writing assistance tools in the classroom should be integrated into that classroom, integrated in a sense that not only are allowed without. Uh, uh, supervision. No, we need to introduce them. We need to let students use them. And probably sometimes we need to let students um, uh, uh, experiment with them. But the control that we should have over this is in the learning process, not in the production process, i.e. we should not let the students use these tools uh, without control. Like we cannot ask them to do assignments and then we give them all these tools and then we come up with, they come up with a um, an improved version of their writing. We don't know who wrote this version of writing, and then we mark it. What we mean here by the inclusion is, uh, or the integration is, to to make this uh, these tools as part of the learning process where they use these tools, they use these uh, um, uh, technologies in the production of their first drafts or as part of exercises and uh, worksheets. They work with as as an example of, of Google Translate, where students compare their writing with the, with the translation of Google Translate. So for the sake of comparison, sometimes for the sake of learning, that's fine, but um, not beyond that, let, not let the students just use these, these tools. And this summarizes what the uh, researchers think um, regarding the integration of these tools. So it should be integrated. They think that it should be integrated, but with, with caution. So we don't allow students to use them independently. We need to have some sort of control. We need, as educators, educate ourselves on the use of these tools and um, uh, have hands on uh, these tools. Um, the second perspective uh, in terms of the recommendations, some of them think that we need to have an eco ecological perspective towards the automated writing assistance tools where um, the teacher who use AWE or machine translation as an instructional tool for improving writing and language development tend to use several other strategies as well as provide feedback. So it has been shown that automated or automatic writing evaluation and AWCF studies emphasize the importance of keeping using the structure feedback. So the, 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 the teacher should be there, should be giving feedback all the time on students' writing rather than relying only and exclusively on the automated feedback. So it is some sort of, we bring these tools uh, um, if we believe that these tools can help us with the superficial uh, surface level kind of mistakes, as we, as we said before, that is fine. That is not a problem that will help us. So that will give teachers more time to concentrate on the other types of, of mistakes and, and, and accuracies students have in their writing and give them the proper feedback they need. Um, that is uh, what is believed to be uh, the case. Uh, in conclusion, I think uh, in light of the advancements in automated writing assistance, second language learners and writing instructors ought to be more aware of what artificial intelligence systems can offer in regard to writing assistance. With all publicity surrounding the use of the artificial intelligence and writing assistance tools, there is no doubt that students will likely use text generators and other emerging writing tools, and we've seen that actually, regardless of their effectiveness or ethics. Since this is likely to be the case, educators and researchers are responsible for finding ways to allow students to use the tools appropriately and integrating their use into instruction whenever that is possible. The benefits of training L2 learners on the best use of AI writing tools extend to even after their graduation as they are likely to use these tools for improving their texts in their future careers. The ability to use these technologies has grown to be a critical aspect of digital literacy in educational and professional settings. And actually, this is going to be the case in the coming few years. Uh, and we will see this actually um, in, in our classes and, 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 and in our um, educational settings. So we should be prepared actually, and we should, we should not reject the idea. We should not just allow it. We should educate ourselves. And that is actually puts an end to the uh, presentation, I hope. Um, uh, I made uh, all the points clear, uh, given the time. I think I even uh, 
more than time than expected. Um, thank you so much for listening.